In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between three types of microscopes – stereo, compound and scanning electron microscope. And what better sample to use than a butterfly wing? It's perfect for this kind of demo. My name is Eric and I'm your microscopy specialist. Let's dive into it. Let's start with a quick experiment. We see the world in 3D thanks to something called stereo vision. We've got two eyes and by using both we can judge how far away things are. If your vision is okay, this happens pretty naturally. But the moment you close one eye, judging distance gets tricky. Your brain has to guess based on clues instead of actually seeing depth. A stereo microscope works kind of like your eyes. It actually has two separate optical paths, one for your left eye and one for your right. These two views are slightly different, just like what each of your eyes sees. So when you look through it with both eyes, you get a 3D image. But if we record through a camera, the image looks flat, because we're only using one optical path, in this case left side. Stereo microscopes don't zoom in super close, usually just up to 50 times magnification. There are rare systems that goes up to 200 times, but that's not common. The real advantage is that you get a wide field of view and a 3D look at your sample. You can also see colors clearly. I'm using a size Temi 305 microscope with both reflected and transmitted light. That lighting setup lets me see the butterfly wing in a bunch of different ways. The transmitted light can be adjusted so I can switch between bright field and dark field illumination. So what can we tell about the butterfly wing using this microscope? We can see it's made up of little scales and hairs with different colors. We can't make out much detail yet, but we can clearly see their shape. To go deeper we need a more powerful microscope. Next up is the compound microscope, the classic lab microscope. To use it we need to prepare a proper slide. I've got a permanent slide from my Japan collection here, a butterfly wing mounted under a cover sleeve and fixed with Canadian balsam. Standard magnification here goes up to 400 and with a special oil called immersion oil we can push that to 1000 times. We also have ways to enhance contrast like using face contrast techniques. Now we're seeing something new. Each scale has fine internal lines and maybe even some internal structures. But here's the thing, there are limits. The image isn't super sharp in depth, that's called low depth of field, and we can't really see anything smaller than a half a micron, which is pretty tiny but not tiny enough for this. Also, since we're using light that passes through the sample, the colors aren't exactly accurate. They are a mix of surface color and whatever's inside the sample. Let's be honest, this is probably what you came for, the electron microscope. To look at something under the SCM, we first have to coat it with a super thin layer of carbon or metal to make it conduct electricity. I'm using platinum for this. The layer is less than a nanometer thick so really, really thin. Then we put a sample in a vacuum chamber, adjust the electron beam and boom, we get a result. This microscope has a motorized stage so we can tilt and rotate the sample inside. The image is created using an electron beam instead of light and since it's a monochrome source, all the images are black and white. If you're curious how this electron microscope works, check out my other video where I break it all down and show you how I set it up step by step. With up to 20,000 times magnification, we can see incredibly fine detail on the butterfly wing scale. And with field emission microscope like this Gemini 560 and special in lens detector, we can even get crazy sub nanometer resolution. So, how do we get color images? Well, there are two ways. The first is manually colorize the black and white image, it's simple. And the second is use AI to add color automatically. I send a few images to Brandon Antonio and here's a link to his works. And he got some fun results with AI tools. Anyway, the electron microscope is an amazing tool. It gives us super detailed, high quality images that are incredibly useful for science and beyond. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video interesting. In the next one, I'll show you a few fun tricks, so don't forget to subscribe. Microscopy is an amazing world, and we've only just scratched the surface. See you.